Morning, everybody. Uh, thanks for tuning in once again. So, you know, last week I did a um, a fly pattern from, you know, a, a gentleman who had a shop near me. Uh, I'm going to try and do two this week, two fly patterns. One from Dave's. Um, going to probably do a bug this week. But we're going to start this week off with a, a streamer because I know some of the streamer people out there are salivating for new streamer stuff. So I'm actually going to do a single hook version of one of my more popular streamer patterns and a relatively easy one to tie. Um, you guys are all familiar with, uh, and this is the Gen 1 Mastiff, well, no, Gen 2 Mastiff Avenger with no bucktail in it. And this one's been fished. It's all beat up. So you're, you're all familiar with the articulated Mastiff Avenger. You know, and then there's the mini Mastiff Avenger. This is all stuff for my Vimeo page. I'm going to update the YouTube channel with all these patterns at some point. I've got so many flies to throw out there. It's going to take a while. And then, you know, obviously there's the giant Predator version right here. Which I know some of you Predator guys out there are salivating over. Can't recall if I've done the video on this or not. But at some point I will do this. Um, but today what we're going to do, and I'll probably do the smallest of three, um, and I'll show you a picture of this. I'm going to kind of insert it into the video of the smaller versions of this um, single hook mast Avenger. Um, they go three successive sizes here. So I've got a number four, a number two, and here's a number one. So I'm going to do this really, really small one today because this is just a great all around fish catching machine and I think it'll appeal to a lot of people that get really really intimidated or don't feel for some reason there's a stigma out there um, I, I read about it a lot um, you know oh, I get a lot of follows but I don't get the fish to commit um, a really good guide and friend of mine um, Alex Lafkus out of Michigan he's done some pretty good YouTube videos talking about and I, I'm 100% on board with what Alex has to say. There's a whole circle of us that like to fish streamers um, quite a bit. Um, you know, listen, I like to fish dry flies, bugs, all that good stuff. I still go out there. I'm very spoiled. I live 10, 10 minutes from some fantastic dry fly fishing. And some days, that's all I do. I grab my dry fly rod and I go out and I just go looking for heads. That never gets old. But I still love to fish streamer patterns. And I like to chase some of those aggressive fish it's just that that never gets old either so but back to what alex talks about is you know converting those follows into eats and you know there's a science to it i think you really step into and i can't stand i'm going on a rant here guys rant i know some of you like this but um i i i've said this a thousand times but people give up on streamer fishing way too easy and I've even read it in print now that, you know, streamer fishing is nothing more than throwing the fly out there and pulling it back to you. And part of my terms here, folks, but that's a bunch of BS, okay? Good lure fishermen and good streamer fishermen do more than just casting the fly out and bringing it back to them. There's a lot that goes on from the point that fly hits the water to the point that it comes up to the side of your boat or wherever you're wade fishing. So I, I think... We need to break these barriers down and, and fly fishing where, you know, everybody's putting one style versus another and this one's better. That's just complete nonsense. Who cares? Go out and have a good time. If, you know, I, you're never done learning. Like, just continue to learn. That's the fun part of it. I mean, if this thing was, if fly fishing was, you know, go out and, you know, rack them up every single day if that's what you're into or it became too easy, none of us would do it anymore. So, you know, knock that stuff off. It's There's no room for it. Just go out and have a good time. It's like at any given time or any given day, one method can outfish another. And I think George Daniel wrote it best, and, you know, he's pontificating on what things that people before him have even said, is, you know, go out and find a piece of water and find out what tactic's going to work best for that that's going to produce. Or if you want to be stubborn, which sometimes we all like to do, because we like to fish a certain way, then do that. All right? rant over anyway um so back to what i was saying a lot of these 
people get intimidated by or they can't convert the eats on a bigger streamer like this and listen there's some days where that happens it's just the fish just turn on or off that's the beauty of it and they find that a smaller fly like this is a heck of a lot more productive they get a, they get a lot more eats on it um, which let's face it that's why we fish we want to catch fish so I'm gonna do the small version of this this is a number four it's got the smallest size mask on it what I will talk about today too when I tie this is as you progress up in size on these a few of the materials in the front of this fly are going to change one being the mask the size of it and two the collar okay um, and on the original mass Avengers I used some sort of a fox brush just to kind of get that different alternative color change up in the front so this is a chartreuse and white and there's some black in there that's a that's some sort of a brush on there um, but as you delve into these smaller flies that brush is just too big I mean you, you could trim it down but it's not gonna look right so I'll show you I use a type of dubbing in here um, that I really like that kinda just brings out some of that color in it and the colors on these are completely up to you um, the four is the smallest one that I tie I use the same style of hook on all these this little guy right here I mean he catches everything from panfish perch you know um, brook trout uh, all the way up to even large brown trout so you know it's and these you can fish tandem too talk about that um, but we'll do the small one today I'm gonna do a second video uh, with one of Dave's patterns that'll be coming up if I don't get it done today I'll do it tomorrow and get it up on the um, YouTube page but that's it I'll uh, let's get cracking all right all right folks so here we go we got a Airx TP 610 number four in the vise. We're going to start with that. First thing we're going to do here is we're going to add just a little tiny drop super glue on there because we're going to put a little bit of weight on this just to give it a little bit of penetrating power in the water. This is just 10 thousandths lead. You could do a little bit more if you'd absolutely like to, but it's completely unnecessary. This is just to help this thing jettison through the air, kind of get down a little bit. It's that. You could do this with ADOT, but I'm going to do 140. It's 140 uh, UTC. We're going to tie this in a very similar color combination to this guy right here. That's number four. Start with your shred. And then we're just going to wrap right over those lead wraps there, right to a point at the bend. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to pre-select just one marabou feather, because this is all we're going to need for a fly this size. And I want that marabou to be about the entire length of the hook. Pinch it in your fingers, transfer it to the other hand, take one wrap to advance your thread up to where that wire starts pull that down and then wrap back over it and then clip that off that's just going to give you a nice neat underbody and then wrap your thread right back to where we started next thing we're going to do uh, you can use any color you want in this the ones I showed you before had some gold in it but we'll use some rusty copper polar chenille any kind of chenille work this is just your underbody here same thing, you want to tie it in in the direction that this stuff flows. So I always try and cut the first few fibers off so I have a tie in point. Advance my thread to roughly about one and a half to two eye lengths back from the eye. And then you can just wrap this in. So you got one of them caught here, so just cut it. There you go. Just spiral wrap it because you don't need a lot of this material. This is a much smaller pattern than the bigger ones, so less is more. A couple turns over, a couple in front. Clip this off, and I try and preen all these fibers rearward, like you see here. Some of them are a little longer, so you know they don't make this stuff in a shorter. Wish they did. Hint, hint, hairline. 
Um, so I'll go in and kind of trim some of these. The beauty of this stuff is it doesn't require to have any flash. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to get some uh, Arctic Fox. And this is the key point in this, folks. This is where most people kind of overdress this fly. You're going to take about half of a pencil's width diameter and try and find the shortest hair you got in your your foxtail if you can. If it's too long, though, I'll show you a little trick here because these are kind of smaller than most of the ones that I typically tie where you can get, you can shorten these up a little bit. Come in with your flea comb, pull out all the under fur. And then I take that hair and I measure it. I don't want it to be as long as the entire fly. I want it to kind of stop somewhere around here. So then I come in like this, clip it. I take my fingers and I reverse it in my hands, just like you see here, because when I reverse tie it, I grab that bundle and then you'll see I'm forcing it down and around the hook so that it essentially goes 180 degrees, or 360 degrees rather, all the way around the hook, just like you see here. So I make a little bit of a thread collar, and then once I've kind of done that, I put equal amounts of pressure or increasing pressure as you do so, I take my little piece of plastic tubing. I'm just going to reverse this stuff. If you got some fibers that are going crazy on you, not a problem. We're going to barrel this just like you see here. And then this is how you just take a look and see how this stuff disperses. Less is more. You don't want a lot. If you overdress this, it's just going to completely take away from the fly. Then we're going to add in a couple of little uh, grizzly hackles down the side. These are more for us, they're not for the fish. Fish don't care, but they make the fly look a little little neater. So I go in, I pull some of those fibers apart, and I just kind of clip right along the sides. So I'll put this one on on the side closest to the camera first. Two turns. Take the second one, measure it up, do the same thing. I'm going to pull most of these fibers back from where I think I'm going to tie it in. And I trim it off so it's not in my way. Pull some of these back as you see here. That just gives me something to tie on. One, two. Trim those back. Trim those back. And then I'm just going to kind of build a little bit thread head on there. And it's going to be oversized because what we're going to do next is, this is how we're going to build our collar on these smaller ones. Because as you'll see here, this is a number one. It uses a one and a half inch fox brush. But on the number four, that's going to be way too much. So we're going to use some dubbing. We're going to spin it in a dubbing loop. So I'm going to take my thread here, make a dubbing loop that's maybe two inches long at best. Take my little dubbing twister, pop it on my thread. And then we're going to take some Senyo's Fusion Dub. And this is like a, calls, he calls it crusty nail, but it's kind of like a coppery brown. So we're going to pull out about yay much. And we're just going to kind of separate this stuff and put it into this dubbing loop. Once we've done that, you don't need a lot of this either, by the way. And I kind of try to even it out. Keep my thread out of the way. I'm just going to give my dubbing twist a turn. If you got some of your fibers from your box fur getting in there, just take your scissors and pull them out. And then I've got this nice little loop here, but it's a little too much. So I'm just going to take my piece of Velcro and I'm just going to kind of brush some of this stuff out. Both directions. And then you'll see what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pull all that fiber to one side. And that's going to kind of make almost like a little chenille type deal here. And we're just going to take, and every turn we're going to wrap it, we're going to pull it rearward. And this is going to make up our little collar for our head. So I get that nice little transition in color. Just like you see here. Take our thread wrap right over it. Once in front. Trim it off. Then whip finish this. Just 
just like you see here. Heck, you can fish that just the way it is, folks. It'll fish completely fine. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to be using the smallest mass that they make. It's a number three on this little guy. This one right here. This is what's going to go on there. So you are not going to need a tremendous amount of resin to adhere this to the hook. So my suggestion is you take some uh, Solaris Thin or whatever you like to use, your favorite resin, put it in one of these little cups, get your bodkin, and we're just going to put a very, very small layer on the top and a little bit on the bottom. Some of this is going to soak in. Once you've done that, the big thing is, is you want to make sure you don't coat your eye, which can very easily be done. Now we're going to take that tiny little mask, and I always I have a, a a paper towel dispenser at my my bench behind me, and I always have paper towels for dealing with resin because sometimes this stuff will just get forced right out. And then once we've done that, we're just going to push that little guy right on there, just like you see here. Once that's in place. Just to make sure that there's nothing in that eye, kind of clear that out. Make sure it's relatively even. Then you're going to take your two torches, just like I got here. Put that on. Next thing we're going to do, and this is just really quick, and you don't need a lot on this, take a tiny little drop of gel Loctite in each little eye well. Would help if I had one that wasn't empty. Dee -dee -dee. This is the problem when you tie a lot. I got like four of these bottles sitting on the counter here. There's a little bit right there. Boom. Boom. And you can put any kind. This, these are really, really small. These eyes don't really accent the fly as much as the larger ones do. One on there. One on the other side. You could totally fish this just the way it is, but personally, I want to make sure these aren't coming out. So same thing, I'll go back at my bodkin, put a very, very thin layer of resin over it. Give it a cure. Do the same on the other side. And I see that eye. Sometimes there's a little ridge in there some of these there we go if there's a little ridge in your I'll use a double edged razor just to kind of take that out um, that ridge will give you fits putting these eyes in I'm sure some of you know exactly what I'm talking about and that's it so that's the single uh, mass Avenger in a, uh, in a kind of a tannish copper Kind of color that's a number four super super simple this thing's just a straight up fish catcher catches a lot of fish uh, i use these as a trailer a lot of times when i'm fishing a double streamer rig and this thing will just whale on fish but you know smaller streams even bigger streams with big trout you know when they get finicky water's low right now we're dealing with lower water and if you've got the affinity to still fish streamers because oh by the way they do still catch fish in low water by the way just so you know that you know, I've heard that they don't, but that's complete baloney. Go out and figure that out for yourself. You might have to go to a more earthy tone kind of stuff like this. I've been catching a ton of fish on this exact fly the last couple of weeks on my home waters. Oh, I forgot too. You probably don't think I catch any either because you're not seeing pictures of fish on Instagram. Because I don't fish for Instagram. I fish for myself and for my friends and my customers. So that's about it. Sorry for the multiple rants. I'm sure a few of you like that. But go out there, have some fun, tie a few of these up, and uh, I'll see you guys on the water. Stay tuned for the next video. Have a great day.